Hello everyone, Treeks here and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot. We have returned to the first island because last time we entered the final part of this game, the third island. Which is also by far the hardest uh, area in this game. <laughs> and it is also where we can find five of the six special gems in this game. And in fact, we found the first one of that um, special gems in the final level that we did in the previous episode. And therefore we can now return to the first island and actually clear off another stage that we were forced to skip the normal gem. <laughs> first things first, I've actually found out that it's not the yellow gem that we earned in the previous episode, but it's actually the orange gem officially. <laughs> it looks yellow to me, but uh, officially this is actually the orange gem, so I'll be changing my name to orange. But one thing does not change, and that is what we are going to play in order to get ourselves the next clear gem, and that is going to be the stage upstream. Here we actually needed the orange gem, not the yellow gem. Indeed, not to be confused with yellow, because that is also in the game. <laughs> That's in fact the final one that we're going to earn. In the final stage where we're going to get a special gem, it is going to be the yellow gem. But at least we can now finish off this stage 100%. Of course, once again, we're not going to go for the relic quite yet. That's the one collectible in all of the stages that I'm uh, currently skipping in my uh, normal run through the game. <laughs> the relics, which we actually earn by uh, completing the time attack. More about those later. No need to actually um, explain a whole lot anymore in this stage. We've seen the stage already. We are just here in order to get all of the chests this time around. And if I actually remember correctly, there's actually going to be two parts in this stage where we need the um, special gem. Usually it's only one area where the platform will actually uh, appear in order to reach areas we couldn't reach before. But in this stage it's actually going to be two um, areas. The first one we actually saw under the waterfall at some point. The second one is going to be uh, at the finish line, all the way at the end. It's also going to be part where we can go even further into the stage for more crates. But first, this part. <laughs> Even though you can't really see it, but uh, the game is mean, there's indeed a crate hiding under this log. <laughs> it contains a 1-up. That's not per se important, but what is important is the fact that we need to break that crate for 100%. That was the first one we were forced to skip, but like I said, it was not the only one. And I think Menno and Randy are going to play uh, alongside each other, because they're both coming up with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. <laughs> that is not a coincidence, I think. <laughs> And this bonus also isn't new. Also seen that one. Still one of my favorites to do because it's a bouncing bonus. <laughs> the bounce of Crash Bandicoot. 22 crates. Let's wreck them up. Almost at the end. Don't forget, this was a World 1 stage and therefore not per se difficult, not per se long. We're going to be through this one quickly. <laughs> Luckily we are because it's the second time we're seeing this stage. Yeah, here we are. Missing two crates. However, like I said, there's a second part of um, extra platforms that has now appeared. Giving us the ability to go even beyond the goal of the stage. Where indeed, two more crates are hiding. One striped one. And a regular one containing Wampa Fruit. And you don't have to go back to the beginning. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's impossible because the platforms actually don't move back and forth. <laughs> but the game is nice to us. It actually gives us another goal beyond the special area that we just entered. So we can finish the stage that way. And finally, complete this World 1 stage. Gem number 12. Completion rate 58%. And with that, we can actually return back to Island 3. Because this was the only stage that um, required this gem in order to go for 100%. The next one is going to give us two stages, so uh, <laughs> then we can actually move back for a bit longer. But for now, this is going to be it. Let's go pick up that blue gem. It needs to happen in probably one of the easier stages to obtain one of the special gems. Just like the previous ones, we once again need to complete that stage in one run without dying, not making use of the checkpoints. But I think Toxic Waste is by far the easiest of the special gem stages. I'm hoping for a first try here, but um, 
I do remember dying here the first time I played it, so it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> I just think it's going to be the easiest. We'll see how it goes. Break every box without dying to earn the blue gem. More of these pinch stripe dudes. They're making it abundantly clear that this factory is being run by mobsters. <laughs> Perhaps the next boss is going to be uh, also related to these guys. Emphasis on the perhaps. <laughs> but anyway, the goal of these guys is to actually roll toxic barrels at us. Which is not going to be a problem now, because we are invincible. <laughs> There's a Tana symbol. Once again, on the lookout for bonuses here. Although, I am pretty sure it's only going to be one bonus. So it's not bonuses that we're looking for. <laughs> Just one bonus. Checkpoint. Not that we need it, but we do need to open it up. <laughs> now, here comes another one. At some point, these barrels are also going to start bouncing, making it even more difficult to avoid them. And only at that part, the stage really becomes difficult, because... Uh, yeah, even you guys have to admit, this is not per se challenging. <laughs> not for this point in the game. Perhaps just the fact that we need to do it uh, in one go... Not being allowed to die if we're going for 100%. It's pretty much the only thing that makes it challenging at this point. Oh yeah, here come the bouncing uh, barrels. They only start out occasionally. But at some point all of the barrels are going to be bouncing. <laughs> and then it's actually going to get pretty tricky to avoid them. In that sense I'm lucky to still have my double Aku Aku with me. I've actually got some margin for error. <laughs> Checkpoint. This might be the final one, actually. Not entirely too sure anymore how long this stage was. Like I've said earlier, I've only played this game once before in my life, so <laughs> I'm not familiar with uh, every single stage quite yet. Bam! <laughs> and here comes the final Tana symbol. It is bounce time. B-O-U-N-S. <laughs> 13 crates. And this one actually containing TNT crates. And remember, as long as they are two crates apart, they can actually ignite each other. So be quick there. <laughs> as you can see. It would be a waste to actually lose your Aku Aku in a silly bonus like this. <laughs> Time to finish this stage off. This final part is going to be exclusively um, bouncing barrels. Let's make sure to... Time this all correctly. Not too bad if you get hit, as long as you have an extra hit. <laughs> and then we earn ourselves the blue gem. And of course, also perfect another stage here in World 3. 13 gems and completion rate above 60% now. Still one key. The second key in the game is, of course, also going to appear in World 3 at some point. In fact, you can already see the um, loose stage on the right over there. <laughs> That's indeed going to be the next unlockable stage. Uh, but before we actually start doing the boss, like I said, we need to go to um, Island 1 again. The blue gem indeed unlocks platforms in two of the earlier stages, and not just one. But let's move back towards the earliest one. We are moving back towards the stage Rolling Stones. Which was really easily recognizable as a blue platform. A thing that we missed. It's time for Coco to try this stage again. Unlock a new path by earning the blue gem elsewhere. Well, guess what game? I have earned the blue gem elsewhere. <laughs> Another stage we can actually run through quite quickly. Of course, skip out on the clock for now. This is not relic hunting. This is crate hunting. When it comes to the time attack, since we are playing in a stage that we've basically already seen for the most part. I can actually quickly talk about that, because I don't have to talk about the stage. <laughs> Everybody who's familiar with uh, Crash Bandicoot might know there's three types of relics that you can earn. In the time attack modes. The normal relic, the golden relic and the platinum relic. In order to achieve full 100% of the game, you actually want to go for the platinum relics, of course. But I think I am not going to do that. If I need to be honest, the times that you need to hit in order to earn those are a little bit too much. 
I think if I actually concentrate and take my time, I am able to um, get them at some point. But I also don't want to waste too much time when it comes to um, completing these games and also uh, recording them for the Let's Play channel. So I've actually decided to um, just go for earning relics, not per se the platinum ones. If I get platinum ones or gold ones, that is still nice to get, of course. <laughs> it's not like I'm uh, going to refuse getting one of the higher relics. But even if it turns out to become a normal one, I'm already satisfied. Because, um, like I said, earning the platinum relics in some of the stages is actually really, really freaking difficult. Beyond the platforming skills that I um, kind of have. So, <laughs> that is not something I'm going for. Maybe later, if I can actually... Um, Take my time a bit more. That I actually come back to this game and uh, try to improve the times that I've set. But, uh, it's not something I'm uh, per se going for in the Let's Play. Long story short. <laughs> Speaking of long story, the story apparently was not long enough because I'm still not through the stage. <laughs> but at least we are approaching the part of the stage we were forced to skip the first time through. So here it is. Remember this blue platform that was lined out before? It is no longer lined out. <laughs> it will actually take us down for six additional crates. And also a nice cameo for Dr. Neocortex. You might think these ruins are old and therefore worship old gods and idols, but I think Neocortex is actually cheating here. <laughs> you wouldn't expect his face to be here. <laughs> Apparently the guy's a bit more important than we all think. But we're still going to stop him, of course. What he's doing is not good. World domination is never a good thing. <laughs> not even for him. But anyway, currently in the first Dr. Brio bonus that we did. Also a guy we need to take out, of course. Dr. Cortex's assistant. Not a surprise, he is indeed also uh, a boss fight that is still coming up. But that is still a long ways away. We still have to do the pinstripe Wataroo fight first, of course, so... <laughs> only the boss fight after that we can expect Dr. Brio. But here we go, that was quickly taken care of. Gem number 14 in our procession out of 26. Over the halfway point, even when it comes to 100%ing all of these stages. Time for the next stage. I was talking about Pinstripe Potteru, but we're still not going to do him. There is indeed another stage where 100% is now unlocked and therefore possible to get. It is going to be a stage that we played very recently because it is going to be on Island 3. So let's go back all the way. And stop right here at Cortex Power. The stage that we did already clear. However, we uh, barely saw anything of the stage. Because we were uh, kind of forced to run through it quite quickly. <laughs> but before moving on to the next boss. Which I'm also going to try to fit in this episode still. We are first going to 100% clear Cortex Power. And therefore also finally showing off the other part of the stage that we uh, did not go to yet. Since there was no use. <laughs> Okay, let's go in. Remember the split pathway that we actually met pretty early on in the stage? First time through in the previous episode we went left, because there was no reason to go right. Now we will also go right. <laughs> take our invincibility with us, and at this split, take a right. Going left is technically even not necessary, because there's no crates on the left pathway. Only once the split pathways meet up again, so you don't have to go to that area if you're looking for crates. But here on the right side, there are crates, so... <laughs> These definitely are required. We first want to go right in order to hit the switch. There's going to be a gangster in the way. But this pinstripe can't hit us the moment we are invincible. But it is funny to make him try. <laughs> and he even blows himself up. <laughs> he shot the TNT crate. <laughs> oh, pinstripes. Next time I'm going to play Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, I'm going to pick the pinstripe. I'm suddenly liking these guys. <laughs> oh, Crash Team Racing, why are you a thing? Um, 
I'm going to wait until going back to the previous area, to the split pathway on the left, because I first need to um, get off the crates on this side. It's a bit sneaky of the game, but uh, there's two crates over here. And yes, if you take the split pathway on the left, you will actually get put after this, so... And it would have been nice if that platform actually respawned a bit quicker. <laughs> My mistake. But at least I can also show off the other methods in uh, approaching this. By first backtracking to the left. To the split pathway over here. In fact, a split pathway that we can now take. Because the blue platform is active. And that way, be able to actually reach this area that was first unreachable. The other part of the stage we just did was already reachable, but... Uh, <laughs> I simply had no reason to go there, and therefore I also skipped out on it then. But this part of the stage we can only do after getting the blue gem. Quickly go, because most of them are TNT crates. They're going to blow each other up. <laughs> Don't have to do it ourselves. At least unless we want to get hit. <laughs> oh, I jumped too early. <laughs> the game is becoming difficult. Precision jumping, help. <laughs> Yeah, that is something you're going to see a lot in these later stages. Jumps that you can only make if you actually really do them perfectly. <laughs> jumping at the very last second, only then you can make these jumps. Very precise jumping. Crash Bandicoot trademark. <laughs> okay, it's one of the TNT crates and you can skip the rest. Don't have to worry. Yeah, that's how you do that jump. <laughs> and now... No, not quite yet. There's still one more part. But after this jump, we should actually get to the point where the split pathways meet up again. Yeah, that's right over here. And remember, if you did not go towards the two crates in this corridor yet, we need to go back from here. It's also not going to be easy because we're reverse platforming now. <laughs> And we all saw what happened last time. <laughs> With the platform that did not respawn yet. Oh, these crates were already opened. Oh. Interesting. Weird. I'm pretty sure I did not hit the checkpoint before returning there. Hmm. Perhaps I've missed something. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> but besides that, we are approaching the final area of the stage. Remember the switch that we actually hit in the pinstripe room? Oh, I missed one of the crates. Um, yeah, I should still be able to do it. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> but anyway, remember that switch that we actually hit all the way at the right side of the room? That's actually for this. Not all of the crates are going to be filled in if you did not hit the switch. Therefore, it is still required in order to achieve 42 crates in this stage. And therefore, our 15th gem. Alright, 18 minutes in the video. That is a bit too much to actually do an entire new stage. But it is good enough to do a ball stage, because those usually are a bit shorter, so... <laughs> yeah, I can actually keep my schedule. I can also fit the pinstripe potteroo fight in this episode. The boss of all of the gangsters we've been uh, seeing running around here. Experimenting on all these Australian creatures is fun and everything, Cortex, but... But was it really necessary to also create mobsters out of them? <laughs> Let's go! My favorite boss fight in this game, if I need to be honest. I really like how this one works. Yeah, he actually shoots around with a Tommy gun. In his office. He doesn't really like his office, I think. <laughs> but our goal is to actually uh, stay safe from him behind his furniture until he drops his guard. Be careful for that, because... Yeah, sometimes you start reloading. That's one point where you can actually dive in. It's actually for the beginning part of the fight. In the second half, things will actually change up. You start shooting like a madman. And at some point... Yeah, it's gun will jam, and then we can actually go in. And be careful, you really need to be behind the furniture perfectly, because otherwise it can still hit you. Yeah, like that. <laughs> the hitbox for this is quite um, annoying, in all honesty. 
I can remember the first time doing this guy, I uh, sometimes really had the feeling that I was hiding behind the furniture in a good way. And yet he was still able to hit me, so... <laughs> we need to be careful for the hitbox here. But that is how this guy works. <laughs> Even the lamp uh, lands on his head. Yeah, this office is no longer in use. <laughs> We've taken out the big boss of the factory. Now it is time for us to move on. And actually find the two scientists responsible for the factory in the first place. Dr. Brio and Dr. Cortex are now our only remaining obstacles in finding our girlfriend. And also to make sure these guys don't conquer the world with their um, weird Australian creatures. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot has just entered the most difficult part. Of the third island. Now moving upwards again. In the tower. Where everything got started. But first. He needs to cross a bridge in order to get there. That alone is going to be a challenge. Thank you all for watching. And see you next time. Treeks out.